this is Steve from Dragstar Games. Uh, we are going to be doing the uh, first box opening video for Dragstar Games. This is a Magic the Gathering Origins, the new core set that's coming out tonight. Uh, it'll be uh, available for sale as soon as the clock turns over to Friday. A uh, little bit about myself, you've probably seen me on a couple of the other videos. I do the Dragstar Report every week. Uh, I was Darth Steve in the Star Wars Armada video. If you haven't seen that yet, it's elsewhere on our channel. It's an awesome video. You're going to have a lot of fun watching it. A little bit about myself and Magic. I started playing Magic back in Alpha, played for a while, dropped out. Uh, coming back in now, I'm mostly an EDH player and I play a lot of Limited. So that's going to be my perspective when I'm talking about the cards here. Uh, my name is Bob, and uh, I've been playing since Iridian Nights, so for about 20 years. I play professionally here and there, and uh, I have topped uh, many big tournaments and other leagues. Um, I'm here to talk about and open some packs. Uh, with my buddy Steve here. We're going to talk about some cool cards and new origin set, and uh, see what uh, what's going on with this, and see if we can have a little bit of fun while we do. We won't actually be going through every single card. If you'll pardon the pun, there is a lot of standard stuff in the set. We'll be focusing mostly on the uh, the stuff that makes us say, oh, uh, and other stuff that uh, might be of interest in all sorts of different play styles. Without further ado, let's, uh, let's get opening. <laughs> Right, first pack. First pack. So, what do we want to look at here? What do we want to look at? So, yeah. So we got a Celestial Flare. That's, we got that's, a Celestial that's Flare. Flare. That's actually a good one to start it off with. Back when it was originally uh, made, this was a well-used card. Great for doing combat tricks. What's also good about it is if you don't realize it, you don't have to play it during combat. You can actually have the guy attack Take the, the, the damage and then after combat cast it. So you can do a little tricks here. You can block one guy and then kill the other one. You can do all kinds of different tricks. A really, really great card. I'm happy they were for that. Next up is actually one I want to talk about uh, Dark Dabbling. So the card itself is pretty good, but I really want to talk about the spell mastery mechanic. See, Origins is, it's all about the origins of some of the iconic planeswalkers. I am a huge story guy, so anytime you see mechanics that play into the story, I am just all over that. And the spell mastery mechanic is something that really makes you feel like you are growing as a, as a planeswalker as the game goes on. Because as you can see, Dark Dabbling by itself is just a cantrip. Uh, it's two and a black, and it regenerates target creature and you draw a card. That's pretty standard, that's pretty basic. Uh, but if you have three, uh, if there are two, uh, two or more uh, instant and or sorcery cards in your graveyard when you cast it as a second effect, uh, you can actually regenerate each other creature instead of just the target creature. There's a lot of cards, several cards actually, five? Or is it more ten? Than that. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of cards in Origins with the spell mastery mechanic, and I'll try to point out some of the cool ones as they come past, but I'm really excited about that mechanic because it really rewards you for playing a longer game and playing a lot more cards. Yeah, it's, it's one of the abilities I think that they just created, I think has a great potential to go on to do more things. It's also uh, anti-delve, it doesn't make you want to use delve like in standard now, so it, it makes you not want to eat that delve up. Um, it also makes you want to load up your graveyard even more. So I, th I think that's a pretty cool thing. There's some really cool cards with it. I kind of wish they would have put it on some creatures, but that might have been a little overpowered. So I, I can I can really see where you're coming from with that. And, and really, if you're emphasizing the spells and the planeswalkers, uh, you kind of want to de-emphasize the creatures just a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. Uh, Those are rare. Well, We've actually got two in this pack, but I'll start with our Ooh, basic rare. Yeah, we got two. Orbs of Warding is the first one. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, expert, so. it's expensive, but it protects you against two things. It protects you against uh, the classic white weenie deck. So anything that's going to throw a whole bunch of one ones or even two twos at you, anytime you're dealt damage, you prevent one of that damage, and you have hexproof. Five is a little expensive for that. But, well, uh, it's awesome in uh, EDH against uh, what's his face, uh, the one where you draw a card. Oh. Oh, Niv-Mizzet, the Niv Firemind. It's, no, well, no, him, Draco 
Master Genius. No, what's the other one? Though? It's it's Underworld Dreams. Underworld and Dreams and Nekus are the Mind Razor. Yeah, that's Nek the one. Nekus are because I used to play uh, Ursa's Armors. Yes, but that that's that's cheaper than Ursa's Armor. Plus, it gives you X proof on top of it. Exactly. So that's and definitely going to replace it. And in a, uh, also in a Planeswalker heavy environment, you having X proof means that your Planeswalkers cannot be lightning bolted. Planeswalkers uh, cannot be have damage redirected to them because technically, remember, you target the player and then redirect the damage. And now the one we really want to talk about, shiny, foily. First, first pack we open a foil, how awesome is that? I mean, I, I, just, feel about I just dumped it on the table and look, we got luck, see? Tragic arrogance, which in no way is relevant to what we just talked about here at all. Mm -hmm. I think this is uh, deceptively an amazing card. It is. I played it in the pre-release. I actually lost games because I didn't choose correctly. So why don't you tell them what it, what it does. So Tragic Arrogance, uh, we'll tell you what it does and then we'll dissect it a little bit. For each player, you choose from among the permanents that player controls, uh, what is it, an, an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker, then each player sacrifices all other non-land permanents he or she controls. So this is similar to an old card from Invasion called Cataclysm, which basically wiped out everything, even lands, and there was no planeswalkers at the time, so we were just white planeswalkers. It was two white and two colorless. They upped it by a colorless layer, which seemed fair and they added planeswalkers in. But I think what really makes the card stick out and really powerful is you as the player get to choose what lives and what dies. Exactly. Um, and it's an amazing card um, because if I put a pacifism on his enchant on his creature, I can make him keep the enchanted creature I yep. put pacifism on. Exactly. I can make him keep that creature, kill all the rest of them. And uh, and let's let's not forget it is of course each player this card only gets more powerful in a multiplayer environment. Yeah, it's it's, um, it's deceptively powerful. You also have to make the right decisions. So if you if you don't make the right decisions, you're in, you're in trouble. So I'm totally going to be running one. Uh, I'm excited about this card. All right, next pack. Here we go. What is going to happen this time? Celestial Flare. Keep going. Keep going. We're going. We're going. We're going. Ah, oh, there we go. Let's do this. All right. So, Evolutionary Leap is the rare from this pack. Uh, enchantment. Cost a green and colorless to come into play. Converted mana cost two. Green, sacrifice a creature. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature. Put that card into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in, in, in a random order. Not any order. So it's, it's not survival of the fittest. Um, that, what is that card? That, that card that card would be bonkers and yeah. standard in mind. But this is probably as close as we're going to get to it. And I actually think in some ways it's better. Um, the sacrificing a creature part is fantastic. Especially if you got death triggers. Anything that, has, that plays with death triggers it's, is going to be fantastic. It's, it's value. Um, also, revealing cards off the top is, it can be really good. In, in EDH, I mean, it just, it's bonkers. Because um, Hermit Druid is, is like a deck in EDH, and it's already pretty annoying. Yeah. And you add this to it. <laughs> um, oh, yes. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a really, again, another underrated card, I think. Um, unfortunately, with a lot of Origins, I think, because we're going to have to wait till the rotation until Theros is out. I think a lot of the cards are going to seem real weak right now, but I and think in there's, a few months they're going to be... And there's already signs that they're, they're thinking that. There's yeah. definitely stuff that's going to be better in the future. And I think this is a card to watch. I think. This is not a card to watch. This is just a teaser for what is hopefully to come. Yeah, hopefully we got a Planeswalker. Oh, shall we? Oh, no. oh, this one. I'm, I seem to be picking the good ones. So. All right. Picking the good ones, picking the good ones. Ah, this is my flash. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Right, there you go. What do we got here? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it's 
about Let's talk about what are we talking about? Let's talk about this one. All right. The Thopters. So we're going to talk about Girapur, Gear Girapur, Girapur, Gear. I'll call it Girapur. Girapur Gear Crafter is what we're going to talk about for a Say second that here. Five times fast. Girapur Gear Crafter. I can't even do it once anymore. So okay. They came up with a whole bunch of these cards for the set that uh, they make little Thopters. So basically on this particular one, there's some there's some really good ones. But on this one, it's a red and two colorless for, yep. for a two-one, and you get a one-one flyer in play. So you can bounce these guys. It's giving you uh, three power on the board for three mana. That's in magic right now, that's really good value. Um, yep. he's not the best one out of them all, I would say, but they gave them mostly to red and blue. And uh, I saw some people pilot some really good Thopter decks for the yep. release. No pun intended. Yeah. I think a booster draft, man, just go Thopter. And of course, it perfectly fits the Is It colors, so no complaints there. Yeah, I, th I, th I think it's really cool. Hopefully, it's a it's a, a preview of what's to come in some yeah. of the stats. So I like it. I think it's neat. Uh, what I'd like to talk about, if you're playing green and you're playing Monorep and Landfalls, Endicar's Royal is one to keep your eyes on. Yeah, interesting. So anytime a land enters the battlefield under your control, you get a 2-2 green elemental creature onto the battlefield. Uh, what does green do a lot of, especially in EDH, playing tons of land? Why not double down for your buck? Yeah, and I, I like I like Landfall. Landfall was a cool ability. My only thing is, like, they didn't put Landfall in the set. Not I'm keyword, hoping they no. bring it back in the next set. Fingers crossed they for them. They just didn't want to put it in here, I hope. Yeah. I think, but, yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping. Fingers crossed they bring it. I really like that ability. And... I'd ask for a drum roll, but we don't have any drums here, so we're going to talk about Relic Seeker. That's our rare for this pack. Uh, the fixed uh, Stoneforge Mystic, I guess. Um, he's, he's okay. Um, the renowned ability I really like. It forces you to attack with your creatures instead of just sitting around with them, which is always good. More interactive magic is more fun magic, in my opinion. Well, I like it. I like renowned because it makes your opponent have to make a decision. Right. Like, if I take two now and let it come through, now I'm going to be taking three every turn after. Exactly. That's, that, that, that's a really tough decision. I like magic cards that make your opponent make decisions for you. Totally have to agree with that. Yeah, I, I like this. Renown's a really cool ability. This and, one, uh, you know... When he becomes Renown, so that first time that ability triggers, uh, and in fact, the only time, it's just like Monstrosity that way, the only time that ability triggers, you are going to be able to search your library for an equipment card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. It's not as good as Stoneforge where you could just cheat the card out after right. you've tutored it. Stoneforge was crazy anyway, but this, is, this has potential to be pretty good. All right, this time I'm going to take one. I'm going to take one. Watch it, watch it completely be a, the, the one gonna, bad card. It's gonna be, He's my good luck in this one. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be, Okay. Alright. Uh, nice there. Dragon Fodder's nice. Dragon Fodder. Well, this one, this one's going to look familiar because we saw this in the last expansion, but they brought back Dragon Fodder. I think it's always good. I mean, two mana for two toughness, and you get two guys to kind of go at the, you know, blockers, stuff like that. It's, it's pretty fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, here's, actually, here's actually a fun one. Um, we're going to talk uh, for a second or two about Nivix Barrier. Huh? Um, I like flashcards. I like, uh, they help me learn in school, they help me learn grammar and spelling, but that's not the kind of flashcard we're talking about today. Uh, cards, uh, permanence with flash natively. I like how they mess with the game, uh, especially when you're not expecting it. Yeah, I like that it gives a negative four, negative zero, and it kind of just blanks a, you know, a, a creature's power out for a turn. I kind of like that. It's so you could, it's a nice um, combat trick. Yeah. So you could, you could absolutely uh, play it and use that ability to keep itself alive for another turn, or you could uh, play it and uh, functionally block two creatures with it. And yes, I did just sneak a card in there. Animus Awakening. Yes. So th this card, I looked at it, and I'm, you know, I'm a Timmy, I'm a Spike, I'm a, you know, you know, I'm, I'm all those. I like every aspect. This card, for some reason, is screaming... Uh, break me yeah. all over it. Um, why don't you let him know what it is? <clears throat> Reveal the top X cards of your library. X is in the casting cost, so yes, it is one of those. I remember back in the day when people were just super confused. What does X mean? Algebra. Basic algebra. You guys should all know this. Reveal the top X cards of your library. Put all land cards among them onto the battlefield tapped, and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So, first off, 
this is kind of like the Genesis wave for lands. Yes. Uh, Genesis wave is a crazy card in is. EDH. Uh, and we're going to see a lot of this in EDH as well. Yeah, and then the now there's, there's that spell mastery. If there are two or more instant and or sorcery cards in your graveyard, untap those lands. Now, does it say basic lands? It does not say basic lands. It, says it just lands. says land cards. So there, there is the key. If you're a modern player, we were just talking before the film, uh, filming about green red Tron and green white Tron. Guess what? This is probably going to be going into Tron deck. Maybe. Because, maybe. Yeah. yeah, you just get your Ursa Tron out, boom, exactly. you're done. Or in like EDH, yep. you're like, you just mill to your gaze cradle. Um, That's kind of good. All of those lands that interplay tapped, if you're a spell mastery at this point, suddenly everything that enters the battlefield tapped still comes in tapped, and then you untap it. And then you have all that stuff to untap, and then you cast another one to exactly. do it again. Exactly. Because again, the, uh, for uh, for purposes of, uh, of timing, it does not say those lands interplay untapped instead. It says those lands untap those lands. Yeah, it's, so. it's, 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 it's a scream and break me. I, I don't know if it's going to be a deck or a thing, but there's, easy, there's, uh, it's going to be in something. And there's an easy combo. Easy combo with that is uh, the the, uh, the staple rampaging Baylots. Uh, oh yeah, we were throwing this. We need to throw more of this. All right, what do we got this time? Uh, I'm just going to show this one off. The Boromancer is a reprint, but I just have to say something We've that classic. a million times. But every Rebecca time, Gwai artwork. Rebecca Gwai artwork is never going to go out of style. I would never choose that card in Booster. I would also not choose that card in Booster. The art is so good. Yeah, it's beautiful. Beautiful art. Uh, let's see, what are we looking at here? Uh, uh, yep, this is actually a very good card. We're getting lucky today. We're getting very lucky. Uh, we're going to talk about Hallowed Moonlight. It's an instant. It's going to play right into that uh, spell mastery. Until end of turn, if a creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile it instead. Draw a card. This is Containment Priest in instant form. Uh, it can be flashed in where contain well, Containment Priest can be flashed. It is uh, not well, vulnerable. It is a cantrip, so it'll get the card back. Uh, it is. Uh, it's a good card. Yeah, it's. I, I see it being played Legacy, maybe Modern. It's Modern now. You know, they made this card to go against uh, Splinter Twin yep. X. That's what this card was designed Very for. much so. Um, it's great against certain decks in the age. Standard, uh, you know, there's some. You got goblins, people are playing yep. tokens. This is going to Because you're always going to have goblins that search for other goblins. And then uh, right now, Rattlemaster is still in standard for a few more months. So this will this will really put a hurting on Rattlemaster decks. And then you, you also got uh, against uh, the new Liliana. Yes. She puts a 2-2. Two, when something dies, she puts a 2-2 two, two out. Not anymore. You can stop that. She'll still flip. Right. But you can do something about it. It's a really good card. It's, it's really good. I am, I'm happy about it. White is one of my colors. Definitely happy about it. Oh, he beat me to it. All right, Bob. What do we got? You're getting it. I'm getting it. Yeah, one month. Uh, one thing at a time. Okay. Ooh. Titanic Growth. Ooh, I heard a new Titanic Growth, that's a staple. Uh, this one. Uh oh. We have a this one. We haven't talked about We it. have not. Well, we, so, uh, this is an all star and seal and a booster draft. If you, you're playing green, take as many of these as you can. They have renown two and they have trample. You've got to get through and hit with the renown. Exactly. It's just for five mana, for four four, it's good. Trampler is good by itself. Then it turns into a six six. By the way, and if you didn't know, we do draft at Dragstar every Monday. Draft starts at seven o'clock. Uh, we try our best to always draft the current draft format. Uh, so actually, starting this week, we'll be drafting Origins. Come join us then. Cool. What are we talking about? Good one. Yes, we're, doing good here. we're definitely doing. You're, you're doing good. You're the one picking the, the good ones here. Rin Wingmare. It's a three mana for a two one flyer. So that is that's pretty okay. It's a, it's, I, I prefer a little more toughness, but you know it's white. It's the color of boosting. I'm sure that's going to survive for a while. And non creature card spells cost one more to cast. It's, it's kind of like a sphere resistance kind of on a stick. Yeah, on a stick. It's like you don't. Legendary, uh, it was a legendary one. Um, she made them all. But she was legendary. She was legendary. You can only have one. You can have a bunch of these. I uh, four now. Talk about, uh, talk about putting a hurt on burning control decks with just uh, one card times four. Slow, slow it down. Yep. 
Yeah. Give yourself uh, some more time to play. It's just a shame it's three. It is. Sure. But the two would be, I think two would be a little too powerful. The flying. The flying. Exactly. Cool All card. Right. Really cool card. Uh, you know what? This one has Liliana. We're going to go with one with Liliana. I, I, like, I like Liliana. I am not ashamed. Sorry, Chandra. Uh, not ashamed to admit it. Okay, let's see what do we got here. That one's just a standard interplay effect, so we've got uh, everything coming in. Super, super strong. No, but it'll help those uh, those little white one ones coming up. Uh, what do we got? What do we got? Our rare is oh, our first legendary creature of the set is unfortunately not one of the flip planeswalkers, but still worth talking about. This is Al Hamaret, High Arbiter. Uh, he is a 700 amount of cost. Flyer, 5-5, five, five, so that's, uh, that's a little expensive, but uh, as Al Hamaret, High Arbiter, enters the battlefield, each opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose the name of a non-land card uh, revealed this way. Your opponents can't cast spells with the chosen name as long as Al Hamaret is on the battlefield. Awesome card in ADH. Yep. Also, I know people who make Sphinx uh, ADH cards. Yes, he We're is. We're always Sphinx. looking for new Sphinxes. Yes, Sphinx true. Sphinx. 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 Yep. I think this is a good one. Um, it's uh, It stops a lot of, you know, like, hey, I'll stop the board wipe that you were going to exactly. use. Exactly. Too bad. Oh, you're just holding on to that card. It's going to be stuck in your hand until you can discard it or he's gone. Yeah. Uh, and uh, similarly, uh, back to the story, this is a major character in Jace's story. He is the first other telepath that Jace meets on his home plane. The name of which I'm completely forgetting, but I'm sure will come up in time. Neither do I. And I'm ashamed of my Myself. Not bad for a Liliana pack, I guess. Not bad. Hey! <laughs> Got a Jace card. A Jace card and a Liliana pack. You're not bad for a Liliana pack, he says. That's for, that's for insulting Liliana. All right, what do we have here? about there being no vampire cards earlier today. I was talking about, I run a vampire deck in EDH. I've got some vampires. I'm happy. I think like every Innistrad, I think they throw, since Innistrad, they throw at least one vampire. It's kind of like the dragon. It's, it's true. Throw, because in Innistrad, they didn't, they put a dragon in Innistrad, and people are like, what? Why is there a dragon in Innistrad? Oh. This card is yes. amazing. It is. It is a uh, limited powerhouse. You will win games. Like just Rogue's Passage. Game. Yes. You just rogue pass with your opponent's card, make it unblock for you, just take it. Whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes the target of a spell or ability you control, gain control of that creature for as long as you control Willbreaker. Uh, he is the emblem you get from Dak Faden, if you guys remember Conspiracy. Except he comes out for, for five mana, you don't have to worry about loyalty. He's only vulnerable to creature destruction or other suppression mechanics. What's awesome about him too is he's a wizard. So yes. Your EDH player is awesome wizard yep. for your wizard deck. Uh, I don't think you'll see standard play because five is a lot. Five is a lot and standard Two, three standard is, is not as fast as a, as a modern environment, but it's still a little faster than the EDH environment. Yeah. But in limited, cool in limited, he's, he's going to win. He's going to win you games. Pick him. Come to Dragstar, Do take this guy. Me with that guy. Twice. So I'm just uh, I'm just gonna set this off to the side and remember I'm gonna play this against Bob. There we go. Okay, there we go. My wizard deck. All right. You're a wizard, Harry. I know. I have a wizard deck. Oh, there we go. Okay, this is a Chandra pack. All right, we'll just go right to the rare. Let's go right to the rare. Oh, here we go. Chandra's emblem and an emblem. Oh, we got Liliana's emblem. emblem. I really love the artwork. It's really good. There's even a card that explains how she got that headdress. Oh, no, that if I you run into it, uh, it's, a, it's a black card. I'll keep my eyes out for that one. But first, we've got Chandra's parents, yep. Pia and Kira Nalar. It's an awesome card. It's uh, the real deal. It's it's like uh, Goblin, uh, what was it, Goblin War Marshal, or where you get the goblin, three goblins yep. out. Um, 
this one you get two two flyers that you can sack them to do. So the uh, the rare in this pack needs no introduction. You know it, you love it. It's Battlefield Forge. So they, they, they reprinted all the uh, opposite uh, pain lands again. Um, they've been around for a while since yeah. Apocalypse. Um, but they're still good. Yeah. Uh, lands will never go out of stock. I've been playing every pre-release since Apocalypse, so... Um, you know, not surprised they put them in here. Yeah. They go well, pretty well. It's good land. Uh, we've got some more elf synergy going on with uh, Shaman of the Pack. If you play elves, you probably play a lot of elves. How would you like a card that counts your devotion to elf? Yeah, that's that's, that's basically when what you attack it. Or no, when it comes when it comes into the battlefield, target opponent loses life equal to the number of elves you control. It's not gray merchant, but it's half of a gray merchant. And it costs a lot less. And it goes crazy in your your elf tribal deck. It really does. Um, black green elves back in Morrowind were were a thing. They were they were pretty rough. Back then. And um, and obviously we're revisiting uh, Lorwyn as one of the planes that we're visiting because uh, we're talking about the uh, the guilt leaves uh, are in there. A lot of the elves from uh, from the Lorwyn block. Did I actually get that over my shoulder? Barely. I think that stuck on my shoulder. My throwing arm needs a lot of work. <laughs> All right, we got another one. Keep going, keep going. Okay. Oh, it's way out of order. That is, that's a little, a little well, Let's talk about the foil. Let's talk about our foil here. Yeah, the, the rose. Can you see? So our foil is Boggart Brute. It is a nice standard red card, but it has a new mechanic that I haven't seen before. It's called Menace. Uh, this creature can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. We've seen that spelled out a couple of times. It's got its own keyword for, is this the first time Menace has yeah, had a keyword? Yeah, they gave it a keyword. It's basically Goblin War Drums. Yep. Which I think they did as a flavor shot back, because Goblin War Drums was red in 2000. Right. I think they made this guy as a shout out to that old. Or make a goblin with a red and two cards from Fallen yeah. Empires. Um, I, I think they just that abused technology. it. I think it's um, their argument to get rid of Intimidate and those kind of cards. I, I think it holds water. I think it does, uh, but it's also fun to see them playing a lot with mechanics that, again, force you to make interesting decisions. Hey, Watsy, bring back Shadow. Oh, oh. Ooh. Not phasing, though. That was a little weird. Yeah, but Shadow was amazing. Our rare for this pack is Jace's Sanctum. Infinite and Sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. Uh, we had, what, what was it, Wizard's Duel, Spell Duel that, uh, from back in the day that made all instant and sorcery cards cost less to cast. This one is just for you. And in addition, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, scry one. Yet more impetus to not delve away those instant and sorcery spells you're casting for those spell mastery cards. And they also, they also made uh, scry a uh, evergreen mechanic. Yes. So that it's going to be like flying or or trample or something yep. like that. You'll see it show up every once in a while. Which is, it is a super good, very relevant mechanic. I'm, I'm glad it came into play. I'm glad it's not just a block mechanic, even though it was super, super on topic for the Theros block. All right, let's go. Let's see what rare we got. Rare we got this time. Now this is just, just a fantastic name. Infinite Obliteration. I'm already in love with the card, and I haven't even looked at what it does. Yeah, it's uh, like a Crino extraction, but for creatures, yep. I think, right? Name a creature card, search target opponent's graveyard hand and library for any number of cards with the same name, and exile them. Then he, that player shuffles his over library as is standard when you search. Uh, so, yeah, cranial, uh, cranial extraction, but for creature parts. And it's a sorcery. Yep. And it's three mana. It's, it's, it's okay. I, I, you know, obviously it's not an EDH card. <laughs> no, oh, geez, no, it's very uh, expensive. Uh, well, if you knew he was running such and such in his deck. Right. Uh, oh, uh, you just shuffled, uh, shuffled that Eldrazi Titan into the deck. It's, I don't know. No, no it's, it's really not an EDH card. card. It's a great o standard okay. card. Okay, yeah. Um, it's, it's okay, depending, it's telling me that they might have something coming out that they might want to do that. They also made a series of creatures where you get benefits if you have more than one out in play. Right. Then they're also going to be returning allies, and the card they said, as a creature type. So I think that might, they might push that and they're kind of worried. That, the makes, that does make sense. Bad, so but then, bad. at minimum, all those Rabble Master decks that you saw, all those Goblin Token decks, imagine your opponent suddenly playing with zero Rabble Masters ever again. Yeah. It's whole linchpin, or card we haven't seen yet, Goblin Piledriver. Hopefully there's one coming up in here. 
This isn't the pack. This isn't the pack, he says. Now taking bets. That'd be funny if it were. Place your bets in the comments below. We won't see them before we open up the pack, but it'll be interesting to see how many people think that there is a goblin pile driver in here. Nope, just some other. Yeah, and just to show it off, another land, Caves of Coilos, black, white. Yeah, More job colors. Uh, uh, Painland needs no introduction. Let's see what's in this one. Sigil of the Empty Throne. Here's a, here's a card that, man, they could have put in Theros and they didn't. They could have. There's a lot of cards uh, in this set that like, oh, I wish they were in Theros Black. Exactly. Um, from what I read about this set, they originally it was going to be a regular core set. And at the last minute when they made the changes to, uh, you know, cutting out the core sets, um, they decided to go back and change it and call it Origins. Right. So they kind of had to go back, throw some new cards in it. And um, they wanted Which, to kind of give Theros the last hurrah before it I'm, I'm, I'm actually very glad that they did. Uh, although I believe this is actually uh, banned, so we're actually talking about Alara here. Yeah, right, but it, this would have been great. Oh, it would have been absolutely great fantastic Theros. in Theros, yeah. yeah. Mm, would have been awesome. Yeah, no, no arguments there. I'm going to open one. All right, all right. She does that. What do we get? We got some commons. Okay. Well, of course we got commons. Commons are pretty, uh, pretty common there. Actually, I'd like to talk All about right. the flavor of that card. Let's talk about the flavor of Pricky. I, like, I like cards when they make uh, cards with flavor on it. And this is one of them. Uh, the the purple board. It has this idea like it's sleeping, but if you go to poke it, yep. or it, it's going to come out of its cave and it's going to hurt you. So as long as it, as long as um, as long as it's your turn, right. Prickle Boar gets plus two plus zero and has first strike. That's that's amazing. It is. That's that's right. five five mana, only one of which is red, uh, for a five three first striker. I'll right. take that. Great. Uh, only on your turn, but when else are you going to use a 5 3 for a striker? Yeah, great, uh, great flavor on the card. I love the artwork. Too. Oh, definitely. They're like, oh, we got too close. Whoa. And uh, mm, let, let us not forget the flavor text. <clears throat> Canyons in the Forbrous Badlands are essentially gates to the underworld because these guys are living. Right. Awesome. Just the flavor on the card's awesome. So we got uh, this guy. Pixus, Prison Warden. I believe he's one of the intro pack guys. He is. Yeah, he's uh, the, what is it, the, the, the blue-white intro pack one? Probably, yeah. I think it's blue-white. It's a different one. Yep, they do have the alternate art ones for that. Uh, this is one of the uh, legendary mentor creatures. This is Gideon's mentor, uh, or Kytheon as he was originally known. Uh, he's got flash, so he's one of the ones you can hold in reserve. And whenever a creature deals combat damage to you, if Hyksus Prison Warden enters the battlefield this turn, exile that creature until Hyksus leaves the battlefield. Uh, that's a pretty complex way of saying it, but again, it's magic. They have to be very careful with how they say it. Short version is, if a creature deals damage to you, and that damage is on the stack, and then Hyksus enters the battlefield that turn, so you play him in response, uh, then that creature will be exiled for dealing damage to you. Yeah, when he's, he, he's okay. He is okay. Again, in limited, this can get rid of a very pesky uh, couple of creatures. Uh, in, uh, in EDH, with the higher life totals, if someone swings at you with a lot of creatures and then you can flash into Hyksus, uh, yeah. that can basically... You have one of them, you've got to take the damage, right? You do have to take the damage. It is if a creature dealt combat damage, so fog won't work, yeah. uh, you can't you can't have it an unblocked creature, but you do have to take the damage. Yeah, so. if, if it was something like target attacking creature, right. it would be awesome. You could choose for one. He's still absolutely perfectly in flavor for, uh, for white, but... I, I do agree with what Bob's saying. It would be nice if it was target attack, uh, attack the creatures. So, as it is, I still like it. All right, what are we going to get this time? You know what? We could open two packs at once. Let's, 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 let's be wild and crazy. We're going to open two packs at once. For like, uh, what is it, a Christmas story? Where they're all opening the presents and they're just throwing yep. socks. <laughs> it's all over everywhere. Kind of oh, I haven't seen that one in, in years. Okay, here we go. Uh, my rare is Displacement Wave. It is a classic style blue bounce card. Uh, two blue and X return all non-land permanents with converted mana cost X or less to their owner's hands. Simple, basic, blue. It's a pretty cool card. Yeah. It's a 
sorcery, so you can't actually do it in response to someone attacking, but it's a very good way, and of course, you could, uh, you're using this in ADH, you drop your eight mana cost guy and bounce everything with seven or less, and suddenly you've got the biggest creature on the board. It's, it's really, uh, it's set at rare. Yeah. It's, it, some people would call it a junk rare, but it's really, it's set up for a seal. Exactly. limited play to where you don't want someone, there used to be a card like this that was an instant and it was an uncommon. Right. Yeah, that, that's just a little too powerful. And you would draw like three of those uncommon. and they would never get a creature. And it was kind of crazy back then. Um, I, I, yeah, I, it's that rare for a reason. It is. Yeah. It is. And it's a sorcery for a reason. Yeah. But it's a good card. Yes. There is such a thing as a junk rare. This is not it. <laughs> wow. It's on the line. <laughs> All right, so what do we have to say about the Priest of the Blood Rise? Well, for five mana, you get a 5-5 five, five and a 2-2. Two, two. Seven for five, that is not bad at all. And all you got to do is take two damage, but if you kill that guy off, you still get the 5-5. Five, five. So send them barreling down at your opponent, or you could uh, use Sacrifice Outlets. There's all sorts of Sacrifice Outlets in the game. Uh, yeah, anything I mean, that makes you five, Sacrifice five, five. I mean, it's, yep. it's seven. It's seven for, or it's five for seven toughness, and power and toughness. That's that's really good. You that is excellent. The guy, do some crazy stuff. There you go. And hey, look, also, you can use that with displacement. Yeah. All right, packs. So while we're opening, uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, Dragstar Games has a whole bunch of Magic events. Uh, not only do we buy Magic cards, which is not an event, but I should mention, we do buy Magic cards. You have a collection, you have a bunch of singles. Bring them in, we'd love to take a look at them. Uh, we've got a Magic event going on pretty much every weeknight. Uh, from Drafts on Monday, Standard on Tuesday and Friday, Modern on Wednesday, Legacy on Thursday, and let's not forget Friday Night Magic. Uh, We've got uh, we've got a lot of stuff. We even do EDH bi-weekly every other Sunday at 3:30. Uh, so not this Sunday. Not this Sunday, Sunday, but next Sunday. Uh, that'll be for any of you watching on a time delay. That'll be the Sunday after Origins release, not the Sunday of Origins release. Uh, so yeah, we'd uh, we'd love to see some new faces. It's always great to uh, to meet new people in the store. Okay, what are we getting this time? I've got Exquisite Firecraft. Cool. Yeah, so um, Watsi in their wisdom now, they feel that burn spells are a little too good. Um, and they've, uh, they've moved a lot of them to rare. And then they start tricking people by going, oh, that card's on. Oh, it's a sorcery. Oh, it is. Oh. Creature, but th this one's um, you know for three mana you do four. It's a sorcery. And three for four is not too bad though. But um, it, it can't. Then it has the spellmaster that can't be countered. If there are two more in some sorcery, etc., etc., it cannot be countered by spells or abilities. So it th could be a modern. That could be. In, uh, th there isn't really a card like that. But three is kind of hard to hit. But if you're playing burn. That's right. a pretty good card. It is, good. it is. And again, if you're playing Burn, you're going to have the cards to trigger Spell Mastery. And so not being able to, uh, being uncounterable, that's that's pretty impressive. Four damage. So 20% of your life in, uh, in standard play. Yep. I got it. Uh -oh. Uh, oh, what do we get here? Vortex. Molten Vortex. I love this card. Um, it's one red, and it's one, you discard a land, and it deals two damage to target creature or player. So it turns all of your lands, doesn't have to be mountains, it turns all of your lands into shops. Yeah. Life of the Loam. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Life oh, of I the just loan, got the shivers. Loan, I just, ooh. It's, it's not as good as Seismic Assault, but it's, it's one red, what? and it's one red to activate. I think, like... It also might be good in burn decks as a finisher, right? Because like a lot of times you're drawing that red and you got like kind of late. Yeah, it's that. like late late game. You're not drawing too many cards. Mountains are basically just choking up your hand. Why not turn that into damage? Yeah, it reminds me of uh, Curse Scroll. I could see that Curse Scroll is like you played it as the last card in the burn, right? Just to fill in the slots. Yeah, and it well it did extra damage. Plus it was exactly. color, which is helpful. Man, I remember first scroll. Yeah, Good times. Awesome card. Better can't be replaced. <sighs> Let's see what we got. Uh, I got sad face. Oh no. What did you get? I got a guild leaf winnower. I got a honor higher. I got a rock. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I did I did get a rock. I'm out. See, yeah, got a mountain. Set. We got a rock. All right. Okay. Let's talk about honored hierarch. honored hierarch. This right. is not as noble as noble hierarch, unfortunately. No. I, I, you know, some people want to defend it. Some people understand it. 
um, they've decided to, that one drop managers are too good, which, you know, there's a debate on why that is, and I'm not going to get into that. My they're, views on it. They're a classic. I could see it going either way, I, but they, they, are, they are a classic. Um, this guy, you know, unfortunately, you get him on turn one, he's really awesome. Right. You get him on any turn after that, he's not so awesome. Now, he's, he's still nice for the any card. But he doesn't give you any mana until turn three. You're right. He doesn't, he doesn't uh, unless unless you're playing something that gives him haste, which, again, we're probably not looking at standard for that. We're looking for modern or uh, EDH. In EDH especially, that'd be, uh, that'd be good. In modern, there's probably actually better cards for EDH is better cards. I'd rather play with Birds of Paradise or something like that. You can only have one Birds of Paradise. Yeah, but then it there's... It can be Birds uh, of Paradise's red-headed uh, cousin. Well, Utopia Tree. Ah! And there's Sylvan K. This, this guy knows way more cards. There's, there's way more cards better than this. I, and then he's a human. If he was an elf, we would be having a different discussion. It would very much be a different discussion. He'd at least be redeemable. What really, I, uh, I, you know, what I think, and just just to offer a little bit of a counterpoint here, one thing I think is that as is, I agree with pretty much everything Bob has said about the current state of what this card is. I'm actually going to be very interested to see where this direction is going, though, because what I think he's interesting for is not just for what he is, which is not that great, but for what kind of heralds, because if this is a new direction, if we're looking at the demonic creatures being aggressive creatures too, that's going to be very interesting to see where they go with that. He just, he just feels like a feel-bad card, but I understand their argument, because right now in standard, it's it's mystic or nothing. Right. Whoever turn one mystic usually wins games. And this that, is point. That, that's getting a little bit boring for people and I understand it. Making and the game more interesting. That's maybe, what it's all maybe, about. Yeah. So, what so Guilt Leaf Winnower, uh, he is a five drop for a four three with menace. There again, menaces can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. When he enters the battlefield, uh, you may destroy target non-elf creature whose power and toughness aren't equal. Yeah, I, this is an awesome flavor card. It is. Um, it might even be standard playable. I'm not sure yet because it, you'll kill lots of creatures in standard right now. I believe every single single one Rhino, of the Dragon Lords. Rhino? No, except for one. Ojutai? No, the red green one. Oh, red, uh, red green, yep. But, yep. Uh, uh, Siege Rhinos. Siege Rhino. Uh, you know, Dun Protectors. Uh, <laughs> Silver Incarriated. Silver Incarriated. Zero three, they're not equal. Yeah. It, well, that has sex proof. But, uh, oh, but then, um, you get uh, Siege Rhino's a big one, because Siege yep. Rhino's kind of dominating. It, it, you know, Tassigers. Yep, it'll pop a Tassiger off it'll the field. It'll pop a it's and then it has great flavor. If you remember, if you ever played during War One, you know the story of War One. The elves were very conceited. That's why it's black. Yep. They didn't like anything that was ugly to them or off. You had that perfect symmetry, but they were kind of hypocritical about it. You know, it's just power and toughness aren't the same. Exactly. Uh, you'll see. You'll see. Uh, they were kind of uh, racist. <laughs> Uh, and, and you'll see a little bit of uh, that in the actual uh, Lorwyn flavor. And this is a common, but the, they called it the Eye Blights. Yeah. Uh, this is an Eye Blight assassin, and uh, their job was to eliminate the eyesores and the Eye Blights, which were the uneven asymmetrical stuff. Your goblins, your bogarts, uh, your bogies. And Bob is excited about something here. Uh, um, I, I, got a, I got a Shivan Reef. It's really not that exciting. Ooh, mine's it's a, better. It's a good card. Yep. So we're going to let Bob talk about... Slam! Days I'm doing. doing. Fixed Time Twister. Um, there's debate online if this card's good or not. There's even talk about maybe uh, banning it in Vintage already. Um, read the card off. So. <clears throat> Each player shuffles his or her hand and graveyard into his or her library, then draws seven cards. If it's your turn, end the turn. And end the turn means the turn ends now. Exile anything on the stack, period. Yeah. So it's kind of a weird card with uh, Necro's Hour decks. It is. But um, so time, uh, time Twister was a card where it reset everybody's hands and graveyards and everything. Um, people's problem with this card is, is you tap out and then you're giving a free set of mana and you don't get rid of their lands or nothing. Um, actually back in the day when you played Time Twister you didn't care about that. Right. Um, there was Time Spiral cards. I remember that one. Yep. From Ursus. That rewound your lands. 
which made it free, and then you got a new hand. That was that was that was very powerful. It was, but it was five minutes. All of the rewind cards in Urza Saga were, were very powerful. I think this card is, is, is actually as close to the Time Twister as we're ever going to go. It is. Um, it's the same casting cost as Sorcery, and if you play this card right in the right deck, it is really really good. It is. Uh, even at, at minimum, it's a come from behind card uh, because if you've been milled out thanks to a lot of the effects that uh, the, the hand jays, if your hand is gone, if you played out, it'll basically reset the game except for the board state, which is pretty cool. And if you're playing, I could see in like a red blue burn deck. Yep. And then you burnt all your burn. Oh, hey, look, there's all those spells back. It's the last card in my hand. I'm just going to reload my hand. Yep. I have a couple mana open. I'll just burn you for the rest of the finish. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, it, it's definitely important you have to build a deck around. I think it's very, very powerful. And uh, although, do remember, there is that end of turn effect, so yeah. you can't. You've, you've got to wait a turn to do that. That yeah. is the only downside. Well, you can also quicken it on okay. someone else's turn. It doesn't end their turn. Oh, uh, yeah. If it's, it's your turn, end the turn. So you can yeah. still do that on their turn. There we go. You do it that way too. Shall it's we continue? Cool it is. It's very good design to fix an old card. I'm just gonna leave that one up there for a while. Let's look at it. It's very pretty. Uh oh, well, we have we have more interesting ones. What'd you get? All right, so I got which one first? I've got an Outland Colossus. It's a giant. It's a five for six six. So we're already ahead of the curve. You have green. And it has Renown 6, so the second it hits someone, it becomes a 12-12. Um, and it cannot be blocked by more than one creature. That's pretty That's pretty good. You'd be chump blocking for days. The only thing that is wrong with this card is it doesn't have Trample. And this is green we're talking about. Green, I'm pretty sure, is going to be able to fix that. Well, two green and three colors is pretty good for the 6-6 six, six just by itself. It really is. This is, this is a straightforward card. You connect with it, you yeah. connect with it and it's, it's a huge problem. Exactly. Exactly. That's it's pretty much game limited, right there. Limited, that's that's a, what they call a bomber. Yeah. That's, you want those if you're playing. But let's talk about something that takes a little more finesse to play than just a uh, fantastic green creature. Yes. Disciple of the Ring. Yeah. Read it. <clears throat> one, exile an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard, then choose one. Counter target non-creature spell unless its opponent pays two. Uh, Disciple of the Ring gets plus one, plus one till end of turn. Untap, uh, tap target creature or untap target creature. So, really, really odd card. Yeah. Um, I don't, you know, it's, I don't know how, I don't think it's standard playable. It's I, really I don't even interesting. Know. It's interesting what they're trying to do. You load up your graveyard and then it's like Delve, except instead of just turning it into uh, mana, into mana cost, it, uh, it turns it into an effect, which is pretty cool. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't know how good it is yet. It's one of those cards like, wait and see. Time will tell. All right, will this be the pack when we pull one of the Planeswalkers? Oh, we Not yet. Oh, no, not yet for me, not yet. I did get a Despoiler of Souls. Despoiler of Souls is a uh, two black mana for a 3-1. It can't block, but with a 3-1, you're gonna wanna be attacking with that fellow anyway. Uh, and uh, for two black, you exile Two, card, two other creature cards from your graveyard return to Spoiler of Souls from your graveyard to the battlefield. So that just keeps coming back. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's like the old, uh, you know, uh, Nether Shades and yep. stuff like that. that it it gets rid of the creatures from your battlefield, from the graveyard, but uh, you're just going to keep loading that fill up and keep replaying it. You're definitely yeah. doing stuff with graveyards. Yeah. Something's coming. I don't know what it Something is. Something is definitely coming. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I didn't nice. get a great rare, but I got that. We got a Mage so, Ring Bully. So this is the this is actually the picture of Jace's bully. Oh. In the story, he's the guy who bullied him. So he's a, I thought that was a pretty interesting card. There's has, more of that flavor there. He has Prowess on him, which... Uh, is Prowess becoming an Evergreen ability? Yes, it is. Very cool. Which, that's a fantastic ability. Right? I really love that in cons. I'm glad it stuck all the way through uh, the cons block Very instead cool. of just being a one-off. Uh, and I'm even more glad that say because uh, again anything that can encourage an instant or burn deck to also play creatures is it's very good in my book. Yes, so I got. I got another Outland Colossus. Cool. 
We got the Sword of the Animus. It is. Uh, equipped creature gets plus one, plus one. Whenever an equipped creature attacks, you may search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tapped, and then, of course, shuffle your library. Note, that's not deal damage. That's when it attacks. They can, people can do nothing to stop that except make the character, an, yeah, correct character creature an invalid attacker. Yeah. Which is hard to do. It just attacks and it triggers. It's awesome. Yep. And in an EDH, it's amazing because you're always trying to get lands exactly. in your deck out. This uh, card is it's so good, it just it plays itself. Expedition maps, people play yep. them. I'm going to replace it with Expedition. That, that's going to replace Expedition. I think it is. I, it's, uh, it is a legendary artifact, so I'm, uh, I'm only going to have uh, one at a time uh, I don't play, but if I'm playing EDH, I don't care. Yeah. It's a pretty cool card. And it'll go in any color deck as it is an artifact. So, we're good there. Lanoir Wastes. I'm having better luck. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, my mana base is fine, but I'm not really having much luck otherwise. Dwinen, Guilt Leaf Dane. There's more of the Lanoir. Uh, Lanoir. Uh, Lorwyn. Lorwyn. Uh, Reach. 3 4. When other elf creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So we have a nice uh, Lord effect going on there. And whenever uh, Dwinen, Guilt Leaf Dane attacks, you get. I think uh, she's re she's really good. Well, she's if, a legend. If, if honored hierarch was out, she'd get more play. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. No, honor honorable hierarch would get more play. <laughs> there you go. This is a difference. Six and one half a dozen. Yeah. Honorable honored hierarch would definitely get more play that way. Okay. All right. So as for what's interesting for me, I have a Montagorger Hydra. Uh, he is a one-one. Trampler. Go figure. They don't make many of those. They really don't. Uh, cost three to play, but whenever a player, a player, casts a spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on Monogorger Hydra. Hydra. Hy Hydra EDH. Boom. Yeah, Hail Hydra. It's going to be my uh, my Halloween costume. I'm going to wear a suit, put a pin on, hug people uncomfortably close, and just whisper, Hail Hydra. You can Gary Shanlin. Yeah. All right. All right. Now, here we go. This guy is going to be an all-star. Erebos is Titan. Um, I mean, Black Devotion is probably yep. going to come back because of this card alone. Uh, um, four with, mana for a 5-5. Five, five. Just looking at the vanilla flavor of this guy, he's way ahead of the curve. And then, you know, it's anti-Delve. Because yep. if he's in your graveyard and they delve the creature away, you get that back. And as long as an opponent controls no creatures, Erebos' Titan is indestructible. Take that creatureless burn deck so you cannot stop it. Yeah, I, I think he's uh, actually better than Desecration Demon, in my opinion. You know, I could see that. Um, he doesn't have an evasion ability, but um, a 5-5 five, five on the ground like that, and it's true. just will not go away. If you want to take care of him, though, remember, Path to Exile is July's Friday Night Magic promo. Come join us on Fridays, get a chance for one. Nice plug. Thank you. I do try. Good segue there. <laughs> Not a segue, I almost fell over on that one. Just, we just don't fall over. Uh, I got the first Planeswalker. Oh! I pulled it first. Bob wins. We didn't actually have a betting pool going, but, uh, but he, he, did, uh, he did win this yeah. one. Uh, yeah, all right. Well, let's talk about this. Yes, let's talk about this one. This is Kytheon, Hero it's, of it's, Akros. It's the dude that becomes a dude that's playing the dude. <laughs> Uh, I, I've got nothing. I can't uh, come back for that one. Gideon has always been the planeswalker that gets his hands dirty. And uh, Kytheon will turn from a transform into Gideon at the end of combat if Kytheon, Hero of Akros, and at least two other creatures attack this turn. You exile him, uh, and then you return to the battlefield transformed. So just, just to, hold on. So Oops. we didn't get any oh, of the planeswalkers. So let me flip planeswalkers in this set. And I think they're all really cool mechanics. It's a fantastic they mechanic. They took not only Planeswalkers as a, as a card type and flip cards and yep. kind of did both. and did something really unique. I hope they keep doing this for all Planeswalkers. I, I really definitely do. At least one per set. The really awesome thing about this, too, for EDH players, these can be made as commanders. Yep. And then you make a deck around them, and then you can flip them as uh, Planeswalkers. And if you play EDH a lot, Planeswalkers are hard to kill. I've got to say, after the pre-release, I had a very hard time fighting a uh, Jace Planeswalker commander deck. It was painful. It was yeah. very painful. So these are really cool designs. I really like them, and they're very flavorful. And when he flips, Gideon becomes Gideon Battleforged. Uh, 
So for those of you who don't know Planeswalkers, I'm sure there are a few of you still out there because when I came back to Magic I didn't. Planeswalkers don't work like regular creatures. They're actually basically allies that join you on the battlefield. They have a mechanic called loyalty. When they come into play, they come into play with that number on the uh, lower left hand, uh, lower right hand corner. Uh, in Gideon's case it is three. When he runs out of loyalty, he just says, forget it guys, I'm out of here. I've done my job, I've done the heavy lifting, it's back on you. Uh, the abilities over here don't cast, uh, don't cost mana. They add or remove loyalty counters. Uh, in this case, you can add, a, add two loyalty counters to Gideon. Up to one target creature an opponent controls attacks Gideon Battle Forged on opponent's next turn if able. So uh, you can save this turn, next turn. That big creature, he's not coming at me. He's coming at Gideon uh, for plus one. You can protect other planeswalkers. Exactly. He's very, very much of a team friendly. Or you. Uh, his plus one ability, you add one loyalty counter, and until your next turn, target creature gains indestructible, untap that creature. And of course, his plus zero ability is a classic one for Gideon. After you've turned him from a guy into a planeswalker, you can turn back into a guy and dude, punch Please do the please do. Yeah. We're about to get lost in infinite Gideon recursion. So uh, let's uh, let's move Gideon what off I, of the field. Also, you note about him. I think he's the first Planeswalker, I could be wrong, where he doesn't have a negative. You're right, I think even other Gideons don't have a negative. He uh, also doesn't have an ultimate. This is true. He might an, ultimate, the uh, an ultimate, for the record, uh, just for uh, clarity's sake, is a large negative uh, loyalty ability that usually has some very resounding effect on the battlefield. Uh, actually, you know what? We're going to say that we think he's the first one that doesn't have a minus so loyalty ability. If we're wrong, sure come on into the store and let us know. Simply, please, don't yell at us. We hate being yelled at. Or the comments. Idiots or wrong or whatever. Who reads YouTube comments? We'll read YouTube comments. No, I'm not going to read Okay, I'm not going to read YouTube comments. You shouldn't read YouTube. Don't read YouTube comments. Come into the store Only the nice ones. Right. All right, so uh, this is not necessarily as exciting as Gideon, but I've got a Scab Clan Berserker here. Actually, this card excites me more than Gideon. Oh, fans, okay, this is as exciting as Gideon. Okay. So Let's talk about this one. Haste and Renown, Haste and Renown together is just amazing. Oh, that is amazing. I, I mean, uh, because you're going to get in there real quick, you get this on turn three. So he's already Arena. basically a, a three mana for a three three since he has yeah, Renown. Now. Last ability. Mm -hmm. That's what it's Whenever an opponent casts a non creature spell, if Scab Clan Berserker is renowned, Scab Clan Berserker deals two damage to that player. Well then, now this does hit uh, only opponents actually, so you yes. can play your non-creature spells with absolute impunity from the Berserker. He's not legendary, so you have yeah. multiples out. And they'll each trigger. Again, um, what's the, the Great Rebel is a card now uh -huh. where it does, you yep. know, it does a two damage. Then you also got the Dragon too, where if you target it, you do three. I like what exactly. they're doing with red. They're making it bad. Your opponent to cast spells. Exactly. Um, it's, it's, not, it's very retaliatory. It's right. not just aggressive. Go ahead. Go ahead and cast it. Come on. And they, they almost got a curve now. Yeah. Where, with those kind of creatures. Yeah, I think the thumb, rebel, you got which, that, is, which is a two, and you got three, the, dragon. the dragon's a five, I want to say. Thunderbird creatures? No, it's four. It's four? Yeah. It's really? Four. Yeah. I, I wow. Think it's four. No, it could be wrong. It could be five. Could Thund be oh, okay. Anyway, last rare of the opening, last rare of the box. This is a limited bomb. I won many games of the pre-release with this card. Kythians Irregulars, you might recognize that name from two rares ago. These are, these are the guys who hung out with Gideon before he was Gideon. Yep. Uh, these, he, are, these are Gideon bros. Exactly. The Gideon bros. So uh, thematically, what you'd have is the hero and two of these guys all attacking to turn him into a Planeswalker, which would just be ultimate story, alternate win conditions. But it, Not actually alternate win conditions, disclaimer. But in limited, you know, the two white, I mean, two I white, don't know if he's tap, really, target creature. He's not really standard player or anything like that. He, he'd go in a good soldier deck. He'd go in a fantastic, a fantastic way to soldier deck. Yeah, but, uh, you know, tapping target creature for two white is just amazing. Yeah. So there you have it. Uh, overall impressions of the box, Bob? I, I think we got a pretty good box. Which I we, got a, we, got, we got two. At least two really good mythics. Uh, we got yeah, a couple of mythics. We got the uh, the blade of the animist, which was uh, it's a fantastic card for anyone. A new time twister. Uh, card. New time twister. Yeah. Some days end doing. Gideon. We got Gideon. Yay! Gideon. So we got a planeswalker out of the box. So that's definitely a good box we there. Got some cool uncommons and stuff. Um, uh, by the way, fun note before we sign off: uh, if you like anything about the story or history of Magic Origins, is a great set for you. Uh, the lands are lands from planes we visited in the past. They are even reusing art from a lot of 
the classic ones. Um, you know, I it's hard to preview because yep. they're changing the way the, the sets are coming out. They, yeah. I really think it's a preview of what's to come. Uh, so yeah, uh, until next time, by the way, this has been uh, Steve and Bob. Uh, come out to Dragstar, say hi to us. Uh, we'll be, uh, actually tonight, we'll be sticking around. Uh, we'll be doing a midnight draft, so we might have some more impressions for you then. Uh, we will see you at the store next time.